Like, will you say hi now? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is what date is it today? June 29. Uh, today we're celebrating the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. And it is also the birthday of Grandma Zenny. So let's greet Grandma Zenny. Happy birthday. Come on. Huh? Happy birthday, Grandma. Happy birthday, Grandma. Hope you're watching this, Grandma. Did you say hi to Grandma? Say hi to Grandma. <laughs> What's Grandma? <laughs> Smile. <laughs> she's, she's a little confused why she could see herself on camera. Okay. Well, it's a very important feast. It's a very big feast. It, it's significant in the church because the image of um, uh, St. Peter and St. Paul are that of uh, the two earliest and, and biggest and more important uh, leaders, perhaps, in the uh, beginning of the church, beginning of Catholicism. Okay? Uh, we know that uh, St. Peter was chosen by Jesus, um, and the episode uh, that we recall is precisely what is in today's Gospel. And Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? He's trying to test his apostles, trying to see if they really know him. After maybe about three years already at this point, he wanted to test them and see if, if his disciples really knew him the way they should know him and the way he has manifested himself to them. Okay? with all his teachings. He wanted first to test whether people, not the disciples, but the people he has been preaching to the Jews understood who he really was, right? So his question was, okay, she wants to go to you. His question was, who do people say that I am? He wanted to conduct a survey and try to understand who do people say I am? And you can see that uh, despite having preached already for three years and, and, and despite being with his disciples and with uh, different kinds of people, still there was confusion, right? Because some people would say, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some others say you're Elijah. Others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. So maybe that was understandable for other people to still be confused as to who Jesus really was. Okay. Uh, because, well, um, they have not received the Holy Spirit. They have not been enlightened by the Holy Spirit to really understand the truths behind the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so you might say, maybe it's understandable that other people don't know him very well. But perhaps it's not the same story for his apostles, right? So he wanted to test his apostles. And he asked them also, well, but... What about you guys? You've been with me for some time now. Who do you say that the Son of God, I mean, <laughs> who do you say that I am? Right? And it was Simon Peter who came up with a perfect answer. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In that very short statement, St. Peter was able to capture in such a short statement the whole essence of Jesus Christ, the whole, the whole humanity, the whole hypostatic union of the humanity and the divinity of Jesus Christ and his mission as well, why he came to earth for. Okay? So listen again to, to, our, to uh, the answer of St. Peter. You are the Christ Christ. Christ means Messiah, right? the Savior, who was sent into the world. By who? By God the Father. And in this statement, uh, uh, St. Peter acknowledges the, 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 the fact that he, Jesus Christ, is the second person of the Blessed Trinity. Okay? Because he calls him the Son of the Living God. Okay? Even the words living God are very, very significant in this, in this phraseology, in this sentence of, of St. Peter, because it shows 
how much St. Peter understood the humanity, the divinity of Jesus Christ. Okay? And that he, he came to earth with a mission. That he was the Messiah to save mankind from sin. And this is, you know, St. Peter came up with that answer not because he was a genius, right? He was quite rough on the edges. He was not the, the, the most intellectual among the apostles either. Okay? Uh, you know, it, it, it was really quite a puzzle as to how St. Peter would have come up with that kind of an answer. But Jesus himself supplied the source of where St. Peter might have gotten that kind of an answer. And he said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but instead my heavenly Father right, revealed this to you. And I say to you, okay, that was in fact like the test case, right? Uh, uh, I say to you, because... These things have been revealed to you by my Heavenly Father. That's a good sign that you are destined to be the leader of the rest of my church. Okay? That was like a good, a good uh, sign that St. Peter was it to be chosen as the first Pope. So Jesus said, okay, I say to you, you are Peter. From that moment on, he changed his name. You see, this is, a, this is where we get the tradition in the church where people who take on a special mission, a vocation, uh, they also take a, they, they're also uh, given a different name, right? It's like signifying that you, are, you now have a new role in your life. And to signify that, we, we will change your name, right? So up to now, you know, the, the uh, religious community, they do this. The Pope himself, well, today is the feast. It's like the feast of the Pope today, too, right? uh, because it's, a, it's the feast of the first Pope. So you see how they change their names, right? Uh, like Pope Francis is Bergoglio, uh, but now he, he changed his name to uh, Francis, right? Uh, and all the other Popes did the same, right? They, were, they changed their name. So changing of the name is a significant step towards defining a mission that they were supposed to have. And what was the name that Jesus gave Peter or Simon? He called him Peter. And that the name Peter means rock. So it signified a very important role for St. Peter. <clears throat> okay? He was to be the rock. And our Lord himself said, you are the pure Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Okay? In other words, upon the foundation of the vocation of St. Peter. He was called to be the first pope, and, and that, that rock was going to be the foundation upon which the entire church was to be built. Okay? So he had a very, very important role, uh, and, and, uh, and the name says it all, right? Peter, the rock, the foundation. And that is where we get also the, the, the idea that, well, the pope, the pope is supposed to be the, the, the source of our security, the source of our uh, assurance that, um, that what, we are, what we are doing in life, the way we follow our Catholic faith, is not anything shaky. It's not anything that is shifty and dependent on, 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 the, on the, uh, the times or, or depending on our mood or depending on how we feel to do things. No, our faith is grounded on some very solid foundation. Okay? Uh, that rock is, is, a, is a metaphor for the solidity of our faith. That this is something that we don't play around with. This is not something we, we just uh, pick up as a hobby. This is not something that we just do on a whim. This is not something that uh, we can change depending on our mood. No. Living our faith is a matter of something integrally solid that we have to incorporate in our lives. Our lives have to be founded on faith. 
the faith of Jesus Christ that he has passed on to the apostles and which he has established upon a rock who was Peter. Okay? And, and the, the Pope Peter, the first Pope, was given a lot of authority by Jesus Christ. He said, I give you the keys okay, of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth are bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth are loosed in heaven. That is such a very powerful, awesome kind of power that, that our Lord has given uh, uh, to the church and has authorized the church to do. But look what he also said. It's not that, hey, you guys can just do your own thing. No, okay, because, because that authority... Vested upon Peter and the first Pope and, and, and all the other Popes is an authority that is based on the Holy Spirit. See, Our Lord promised the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Because there will be the guidance of the Holy Spirit that would come in Pentecost. Right? Many months later, perhaps, after this, this scene in the beach where our Lord asked Peter... Uh, where, 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 you know, who the people say I am, right? Oh, no, sorry. Nah, yeah. well, the, I'm referring to the other scenario when our Lord already rose from the dead and he was at the beach and he asked them, Peter, do you love me? And, and Peter said, yes, you know, you Lord, you know that I love you. Okay, but that's another gospel story. I'm confusing things today. Anyway, so, so today is a very special feast. Okay, let's uh, let's let's recall that the, the Pope has a very heavy burden on his shoulders. It is the burden of really assuring that all of us remain faithful to the teachings of Jesus Christ. He is supposed to be our leader. He is supposed to be giving us good doctrine and, and the guidance we need in order to go to heaven. That's the role of the Pope and it's a very difficult role. That's why we need to pray for the Pope. Okay? We need to pray for the Pope. He, he carries a very heavy burden on his shoulders. He is the vicar of Christ. Right? Vicar. What does the word vicar mean? Huh? Representative. Representative. Yeah. Representative of Jesus Christ on earth. So he is the visible head of the church. He is the visible Christ on earth. Okay? And, and, and <laughs> that is a very, very awesome uh, role uh, that, that our Lord has put on the shoulders of the Pope. And that is why we have to be uh, solicitous for prayers uh, for the, not only the, the, the health of the Pope, but the wisdom and understanding that comes from the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. That He may guide the church to heaven. He may guide all of us to heaven. And uh, one good prayer to offer for the Pope every day, okay, and this we do in our own family, is to offer the rosary. So every day we offer uh, our rosaries for uh, the intentions of the Pope and to, in to include in all of that the bishops too. Okay? Not only the Pope. The Pope is a bishop himself. So we offer prayers for the Pope, for all the other bishops, for our clergy, for our priests. Okay? Today is a very good time to remember this obligation. It is an obligation. It's not, it's not optional for us. It's an act of charity for us to pray for the Pope, the good health of the Pope and his intentions. It is an act of charity. So if you can go to Mass, it's also a very good habit. Offer the Masses that you go to. Offer them for the Pope and for the clergy. And you know, in this season of the pandemic, this is one very important and opportune time to keep the Pope and the clergy very much in mind. So let us make that resolution daily, daily to pray for the Pope and the bishops and the clergy. Okay? Oh, and by the way, one of my, thank you very much, mommy, my wife, Monette, reminded me. Today is also the priestly, uh, uh, the anniversary of the priestly ordination of one of our very good priest friends. That is Father Joseph Ilo. So Father Joseph, if you're hearing this, uh, we'd like to congratulate you on the 29th anniversary of your uh, priestly ordination. So um, 
we'll be praying especially for you uh, on this very, very important day. Okay? And happy birthday also to Grandma Zenny. Uh, so if you're listening to this, happy birthday. Okay, that's it for us, folks. We, uh, we hope that we'll be able to uh, do this again on a daily basis. We, we had a, uh, a long uh, recess, well, owing to the uh, many uh, circumstances of the family that we needed to uh, address. So our schedules uh, were a little bit messed up this last few months. But hopefully we'll get back on track here. And uh, I'd appreciate if you can, you know, like and share this video to spread uh, more of these kinds of commentaries all over the internet. At least this is a part, this is some kind of good news and good, uh, good uh, something to watch. <laughs> uh, breath of fresh air. Okay. Well, thank you. Bye-bye for now.